Okay, it's five after the hour. Uh, so we'll jump into the presentation. We wanna make sure that we have plenty of time for everyone to ask questions. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us for tonight's information session about the Waste Less Mural Project Request for Qualifications. Uh, I'm Jonathan Harwell Dye. I am the Director of Programs for the Arts and Business Council. Uh, and we are one of the partners on this project. Uh, today's agenda, we are going to begin with some introductions. Uh, and then we're going to do a project overview. We're going to talk about uh, the Wasteless Mural Project, uh, what that project is and what that series looks like. We're going to talk about the mural that this RFQ is specifically for, uh, as well as the location, installation, timeline, compensation, application, the entire process uh, for submitting and for being considered for this project, as well as the uh, proposal and implementation and, and full installation of the mural. Uh, and then once we do that, we're going to we're going to spend a little bit of time walking through the application and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. So if you have questions, please save those for the end of the conversation and we will come back to them and everybody will have time to ask as many questions as they have. Uh, so like I said, I'm Jonathan Harwell Dye. I'm the Director of Programs for the Arts and Business Council of Greater Nashville. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit that leverages and unites the unique resources of the arts and business communities to create a thriving, sustainable, creative culture in Nashville. Uh, and that's a really long way of saying that we bring business skills to artists and we bring creativity to businesses. Uh, but that's our mission. That's the work that we do. Uh, and we are excited to be a partner on this initiative. My colleague, Annie Brochus, is also on the call. So I'm going to invite her just to quickly introduce herself as well. Annie, will you in, unmute and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Annie Brochus, and I'm the program manager. I work with Jonathan closely on this um, in terms of helping with some of the logistics and with, with uh, marketing and um, other various bits and pieces that come up along the way. And any will be sharing uh, any links that you see in the slides, any will share those in the chat as we're going along. So you'll be able to, to follow those. And if you reach out to us, a lot of times any will be one of the first people that you talk to. So if you interact with the Arts and Business Council on a regular basis, you probably know any very well. Uh, I'm going to turn it over now, though, to my colleague Stephanie at Urban Green Lab. Uh, Stephanie, I'll let you talk about Urban Green Lab and a little bit about the, the mural series and the project. Sure. Thank you, Jonathan, for uh, arranging this. Uh, we're thrilled to see everyone here. Um, Urban Green Lab is a, a sustainability education nonprofit based here in Nashville. Um, our whole goal is to teach communities how to live sustainably. Um, I serve as the assistant director of special initiatives, which oversees the food waste initiative and uh, the national environmental justice. So, this particular mural series is part of our Waste Less campaign that falls under the Food Waste Initiative. And um, just to give you a little overview of what that is, um, you know, we're really thrilled that this has taken on series form. So we started slowly with uh, the first mural, which you can see here, which is at the Green Hills Kroger. And uh, we've moved on to Patagonia in the Gulch. You can see the artwork there. But the idea behind this particular project is simply that this is a very creative way to bring public education on food waste to the greater national public. And we find that this confluence of using art as the medium and uh, as a way to raise profile of the message um, to waste less has been very impactful and very important in uh, the greater community discussion. So, uh, as you'll, as we go through this process, uh, keep those tenants in mind that we really value the uh, what you bring to the table as an artist and your creativity. Uh, we also value what the community has to say when we discuss the thematic need. You'll notice that food is beautiful uh, for the Green Hills community um, over at Patagonia. Food was an energy, so we really lean into what food is. Uh, the connection to food for each community. And so that will be a driving force for the things that you will be creating. So we're just really excited to get this underway. And again, thank you so much for being a part of this process. Uh, and like well, Stephanie said, this is the third mural in the series. 
uh, and it plays an important role in that public education on reducing food waste. I think, you know, sustainability is one of the most important issues that we're facing in the world today. Uh, and luckily, through the power of art, we can have an impact on sustainability, uh, especially as it pertains to food waste here in Nashville. And so we're excited to be a part of this. Uh, this mural is intended to uh, be installed uh, near Sylvan Park and adjacent to North Nashville neighborhoods uh, at a site that serves as a community gathering spot and a nexus uh, for stationary and mobile food markets, making it an ideal location for a mural celebrating the beauty of food and encouraging the public to waste less. Uh, and so that location uh, is the east facing wall of the turnip truck on Charlotte Avenue. Uh, which is right near the Richland Park Farmers Market, the Richland uh, Park Library. Uh, it is a, a hub for food, especially you know high quality, locally grown, locally sourced food, uh, people that are working and thinking about sustainability, both in the farming and the generation of our food, the growing of our food, as well as sustainability uh, on the consumer side where we are wasting less food. So uh, we feel like this is a really incredible partnership uh, and a really great opportunity to have a mural that is on a really high traffic building uh, that's gonna be seen by a lot of people, gonna spread that message to a lot of people and educate the public on food waste. If you are looking here at the east facing wall, you'll notice that there is already a mural on part of that wall. And so uh, that, three panel mural uh, is to the, when you're facing it as we are in this picture, it is to the left. Uh, the mural that we are commissioning would go directly beside it to the right in this first area. And we are commissioning an artist to paint a mural that will wrap around this window, not covering the window, but leaving that as negative space. Uh, and then over time, they are hoping to create a full mural wall on this wall. Uh, there'll probably be some turnip truck branding, some additional murals in, in these other blocks. Uh, so we anticipate this to be the second um, in this series that will also kind of fill this wall up over time. Uh, and so that's the location, that's the intention for the mural uh, and the intention behind this mural and this request for qualifications. Uh, in terms of installing the mural, uh, the logistics, the, the data that you need to know to be able to plan for this is that the mural size is about 132 square feet uh, area wrapping around that exterior window. Uh, that is 150 square feet minus the 18 square feet that the window comprises. Uh, we are asking that you treat the window as negative space. Uh, and there is a little bit of slope to the sidewalk. If you saw in that picture, you'll notice that. So. Uh, some some things to consider and take a look at. And if you're able to, you know, pop by turn up a uh, truck and, and check that out. Uh, that surface, though, is unpainted concrete panel. Uh, and so that's the surface that you would need to prepare and to paint on. And then the theme, uh, and this is, uh, this is new, this is an update from when we immediately launched the call, but we uh, have confirmed with our partners that the theme for this mural will be food is community waste less. And similar to the mural that you just saw, that uh, food is beautiful, waste less, that, the, that text and that theme uh, should be incorporated prominently into the mural design in some way. Uh, the way that you do that is up to you, but we do want that message to be front and center in this mural. Uh, and then the selected artist will have from May 25th through June 13th to complete the mural. We'll work with you and with the turnip truck to ensure access and uh, and all the stuff that you would need to be able to do that. Uh, but those dates are very hard and fast. And so uh, being available during that window of time will be important to, to realizing this project. Uh, we do have a hard deadline of June 13th. That's very important to know uh, and to be aware of. Uh, what does this process look like? Uh, so right now we are in the RFQ or the request for qualification stage. And what that means is that we're just asking artists to submit an existing portfolio of work, uh, to submit a CV, to submit an artist statement about your work, uh, and then to submit a, a short narrative uh, talking about your connection to the theme uh, or how you might connect the artwork or a future mural to the theme, incorporating your style and your vision as, a, as, a, as an artist. That's what we're asking for folks. Uh, you will include three to five images of past work, 
that artist statement, that CV, a little bit of demographic info for us to track. Uh, but that's what we ask is that on the front end, it's just a request for qualifications. Uh, from the, R the RFQ, those submissions will be due on Sunday, March 31st. Uh, and then after we receive all of the submissions of portfolios, we have a community review committee that is comprised of community members who are connected to the neighborhood, to the turnip truck, uh, to Richland uh, Park Farmers Market, to the library there, vendors from the farmers market, uh, local artists are all part of a community review committee that is going to go through the portfolios that are submitted and help us narrow down and select three finalists who will then be invited to create a proposal for the mural. Uh, that proposal uh, would include a mock-up or a sketch of the building, as well as any information that would be important or relevant for the committee to make a decision. And um, once, and then those three finalists will submit proposals to us. So finalists will be notified the week of April 15th. Uh, proposals will be due from those three finalists by May 6th. And then the selected artists will be notified by May 17th uh, with a mural installation time frame of May 25th to June 13th. If you submit for qualifications, you will be notified in the month of April whether or not you made it to be a finalist. Uh, so after the April 15th date, you will hear back about that. But if you are selected as a finalist, then uh, you will need to be able to confirm your availability for the installation on May 25th through June 13th. That's very important. And so compensation for this process, uh, we are selecting, like I said, up to three finalists, and each finalist will receive a stipend of $250 uh, upon the submission of a full proposal by the deadline. Uh, so sending us that proposal, uh, we will pay you for that time and that labor that you put into creating that proposal. Uh, and then the selected artists from those three finalists will receive an additional payment of $3,960, which is to cover both materials and labor for the mural uh, by the deadline. So that's the entire uh, budget. And what that is, is a, is a $30 per square foot um, rate for the mural. So that's, that's where we came up with that number. And so if you are the selected artist, you will receive the $250 for the proposal. And then if you're selected, the additional $3,960 and $60. Uh, the artist uh, will maintain all uh, rights to their work, but they will be granting a limited license to the Arts and Business Council, to Urban Green Lab, to the Turnip Truck, and their subsidiaries and agents. Uh, and you can read about that on the, the RFQ. It's got information about that, but basically granting a right for us to be able to use your pictures of your mural in uh, connection with promoting the mural series uh, and the purpose of the mural series, the education around uh, food waste and sustainability, uh, as well as just talking generally about the work that we do as organizations. And then for the turnip truck to be able to photograph the building and include that mural within the court regular course of business. Uh, we would not be using your, we would not be making copies of your mural or anything like that. Uh, but only, you know, for just the normal course of business uh, and to be able to promote its existence and the existence of this series. And so uh, by submitting to this, you do agree uh, to that limited license for uh, the partners in this project. All right. And so the, the last thing I will talk about before we open it up to Q&A is going to be the application. And so you can find the application in two places. Uh, the first is on our website at abcnashville.org slash opportunities. Uh, the Opportunities Hub is the portion of our website where we post, you know, job listings, calls for art, RFQs, RFPs, uh, all sorts of different creative opportunities for folks uh, in, in the greater Nashville area. So if you go there, you will find that this uh, call is at the very top of the list, featured uh, very prominently, and if you click into that, that will navigate you to the submittable form, which is the actual submission form. Uh, if you have a submittable.com account, it's really easy once you've set one of those up to submit for this because you will have already uploaded your uh, qualifications, your CV, uh, your portfolio. And so you generally only have to do a, you know, a little bit of writing for the narrative uh, to be able to submit for this. We want that to be 
uh, as you know accessible as possible to every artist. And so uh, the submittable form is the actual application form. And what I'm going to do is pull that up. If you visit our submittable page, uh, either going there directly or visiting visiting it from the Opportunities Hub on our website, you will find that this opportunity is listed here. Uh, and you can click on that to see the guidelines and all the information uh, about this uh, RFQ is listed here about the mural, how to apply, everything really that we're talking about now. Uh, all of that information is listed here. Uh, and then you are able to, through here, submit your portfolio. So when you do that, you click the submit button. Uh, you will see that they will ask for, so they'll give you all the same information. Uh, but then they'll ask for your address. I have my work address plugged in here just so that uh, I can get through to the next page. But you would put your address in here, save address and continue. And then once you get to the form on submittable uh, past entering your address, you will be presented with the actual application form. This is a very simple form. You're going to put first name, last name, your address, city, state, zip, all the normal stuff. Uh, your email, your phone number, your preferred pronouns. Uh, then we ask you for your CV or an artist resume. You may have a professional resume separate from your artist resume, but what we're interested in is your artistic resume, uh, as well as your portfolio or representative images. Like I said, uh, we're asking for three to five images of past work representative of what you would hope to do for this call for uh, request for qualifications. Uh, so. Some the, we hope that the portfolio will be representative of the work that you would ultimately create. Uh, and you can also share a link to your website or an online portfolio as well, in addition to those three to five images. Uh, and then we ask for a artist statement uh, for you to tell us more about you, your creative practice and your experience with mural projects. Uh, that's a 2000 character limit. And then we also have a narrative uh, mural proposal slash statement of intent, also 2000 character limit, uh, where we want you to just detail for the selection committee, any mural ideas that you have just offhand, sort of the, the initial thoughts that you have, how you envision communicating the desired th theme through your art, should you be selected as a finalist. Uh, so, and really, you know, talk about if you have a personal connection or are personally passionate about sustainability, this would be the place to talk about that. Uh, anything that would sort of frame for the selection committee where you come from with your work and where you hope to go if you're selected for this opportunity. And then beyond that, we asked some demographics questions. Uh, you know, where are you located? Gender identity, age, uh, race, ethnicity. Uh, do you identify as a person of color? Uh, do you identify as a member of any of the following populations? This is you know, all of these questions are for funders and grantors and for us to know, you know, if we are serving a diverse and representative population. So we're using this demographic data to assess, you know, our overall program delivery, but also to report to our funders and to the people that ultimately um, are paying for a lot of, of these resources to make sure that we are using those funds diligently and, uh, you know, thoughtfully to deliver programs to the community. So if you, we ask that you um, complete the demographic information, know that that is important uh, to be able to report that to our funders, as well as for us to be able to know who we are serving and if we are serving uh, a diverse cross-section of Nashville's creative community. All right, and then the last piece of the application is uh, a certification that everything in your application is true. Uh, agreeing to be available for the installation from May 25th to June 13th, uh, agreeing to abide by the selection committee's uh, decision, and then finally granting that limited license. Uh, and you can read here, it talks about the details of that uh, and how that would be used to promote, educate, and inform the public about the National Food Waste Initiative uh, and the Waste Less Mural Project, the other programs of ABC and the Ur and Urban Green Lab, as well as in the normal sort of course of doing business of the turnip truck, because that's where the mural would be located. Uh, and that's really it. Beyond that, uh, that's once you've completed all of that, you would submit your uh, qualifications, and then 
we would follow up with you once the review committee uh, has selected the finalist, you would hear from us one way or the other. And so that's really, that's the sort of the high level overview of the process, the details. And so now I think really, we just want to open it up for q and I have a question. Hi, I'm Aaron. Aaron. How did you arrive upon the three different aspects of what food is for this? Can you just share kind of the thinking behind that for this being the third in the series? Um, yes, really the theme is food is, and we often leave that last part blank because what that word is, is decided upon by a group that is of the community. So this is the community of Sylvan Park, of Richland Park, Farmer Martin Pitt, of Turnip Truck, really the North Nashville's, what they have deemed their connection to food. And so that is very important to us that that is reaped from, uh, you know, community input. And so that's where that comes from. And just as, uh, you know, in, earlier in the series, you know, especially with the initial one, that was not taken from a huge group of community members. But I feel like the past two really have joined as many members and as many voices. And as um, Jonathan has put to, to us all, a diversity of those voices um, to come up with the theme, which is food is going Can I ask Great a follow-up question. question to that? Absolutely. How do you frame or think about um, ways that people can waste less? Sure. Um, you know, where we work, uh, we really think about the different places where people are in their lives as the labs of learning. So when you think about where you could waste less within your household, we have all sorts of education towards that in schools and in classrooms, which we are classroom division and then workplaces. So we're really thinking about that from, um, you know, the household level all the way up to the other places where you're living and working. And a lot of those choices are made in food businesses like food restaurants and grocers, as we mentioned, the stationary store of turnip truck, but also the, the local mobile market of the farmer's market. So yes, there are, there are many places and, um, different techniques that we would use to discuss ways to food waste mitigate. Um, a big one, of course, would be composting and um, really reducing how much food you're, you're intaking, you know, in, in terms of when you're shopping um, and really making those considered consumer choices. Does that answer? <laughs> I can go deeper if you want. I'd like you to go deeper, actually. I was... I'm just thinking like what kind of, um, okay, so you shop, you don't buy a ton of groceries that are going to rot in your refrigerator because you can't cook them. Um, you, um, would you say that there's a bias towards vegetables over um, like beef or something? Because isn't it bad for the environment to have like a bunch of cows and stuff like eating the grains and stuff? I mean, is, do you have, do you consider those things as well? You know, Melody, again, great question. Um, at Urban Green Lab, we really try to meet everyone where they are on their sustainable journey. A big part of education is removing the shame and the stigma um, because often we find that as a stumbling block to actually moving forward with sustainability. So yes, um, in answer to what you're saying, no, I think we do incorporate the idea that all food has value and certainly meat versus plant. There's certainly lots of research that says that you know, a plant-based diet will will move the ball forward, but the realities of where we are are maybe they they look a lot different, right? So um, yeah, I think perhaps replacing the the finger wag of you know don't eat beef with maybe look towards something that's a little bit more local, and again like bringing in that inclusivity of the community. We have an exceptional agrarian tradition here right outside of Nashville and even in some urban farming situations inside of Nashville. So we really want to lean on that as, again, like these are some things that you should be thinking of. Certainly preservation, um, composting, whether that be on a commercial scale or even in your backyard. Um, those are things that we're looking at with thinking about your food choices when you're going to a grocer. Yes, I would, I would say that maybe it's quantity, maybe it's the fact that you're privileging 
uh, a local farmer over something that um, is less organic or um, really had a large carbon footprint, even just getting here to the market where you are. So that's really what we've enjoyed um, in the conversations with both the turnip truck and uh, the Richland Park Farmers Market vendors is the fact that they really want to promote the community being able to have that food sovereignty, the ability to help bring and access good quality, clean local food. Um, one more question. Is there a way to know what those local providers of food, like who they are, what their like uh, logos look like, or what they're, you know, what they're represented by, like to incorporate them visually in the mural? Like, is there a way to find um, find out who those people are, who those distributors of local products are? Sure. Yeah. Are you talking about like just the more residential things? I would actually go to the Richland Park Farmers Market page, um, their website. Uh, they have really done a great job of showcasing the vendors so you can get a flavor for who's um, selling out there anyway. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Me Thanks Melody. Um, and we'll try to grab the Richland Farmers Market link and share that in the chat as well. And we also have a few questions in the chat, one that was just submitted and a few that were submitted uh, in the registration process. So I will go through those. Uh, the first question is, will the size of previous works influence an artist's likelihood of being chosen? So that's a good question, but it's got some layers to it. Uh, the Specifically, the size of previous work, I don't think anyone's necessarily looking at that, but I think that having worked on murals previously is going to be a strength for a portfolio. And so murals are by definition usually larger, but not necessarily larger than, you know, like a regular painting or something like that. So that could be a factor, but I think it's experience with murals that would be more relevant than specifically just size. Stephanie, what do you think? I think so, yes. I, I would agree that just having that mural background um, is certainly an, a, a plus. Uh, but yeah, we're flexible enough. All right, and then another question that was submitted, these are through the registration process, but it said, can I submit murals that have that I have worked on, even if they are not my own personal design? Uh, so that's a great question. If you were not the lead artist on a project, uh, you could submit a mural that you worked on, but you have to be very clear in your uh, submission, what you did work on, how you worked on it, who is the original artist, you have to be 100% clear about that. And so that it would not be confusing to anyone for them to think that that was your design. So I think the context of having worked on murals with other artists is could be str a strength for your application, but just making sure there's no confusion is going to be really important. Stephanie, do you have any thoughts on that as well? No, I think that's great. Again, a part of that process, I imagine, is something of an apprenticeship. And that, again, comes with its own uh, pros for experience, certainly cons, but yeah. I think that would be great to uh, uh, it's just be very clear. Yeah. Does the submission need to have a fully developed design for the mural included? No. Uh, the initial submission is a request for qualifications, meaning that we just want your portfolio, a short statement about your ideas for the project, uh, as well as the artist statement, the CV, that sort of thing. We're not asking you to create a, uh, a full-fledged, fully felt, developed design unless you are a finalist. And then we will pay you to do that. Yeah, I think this is for you, Stephanie. Are there specific foods that you would like to highlight or a specific food waste scenario that should get special focus? Uh, for example, fruits and vegetables, takeout, fresh foods, packaged meats, et cetera. Yes, again, I think I would leave it to your creative um, acumen to go with that. I don't think that there are any bad ideas here. Um, in the past, yes, produce has been the priority, but I don't know if you were to look to our Patagonia mural, what they, what was made there was a set of teeth, like a large mouth that got the, the message across. Um, so I think it's probably very important to remember that the, the main audience that will be viewing this are the patrons of the Richland Park Farmers Market. And while yes, like this is definitely throughout the season a place where produce is is king, um, one of our partners who is part of the community voice on our leadership team is uh, 
Radical Rabbit, so uh, Mariah Ragland, and she does prepared meals. So, and while they are vegetarian, you know, there are those vendors throughout the market who don't just deal in that. So I think leaving yourself open would be good. I wouldn't necessarily privilege produce. Um, and again, this could be a, a really great opportunity for a, a divergence from just the, the produce uh, visual that you see in the market. Um, I just want to make sure I am clear here in our submission we are allowed to submit a concept or concepts is that correct in this first portion of the process you can you will submit a the a narrative up to 2000 characters that you can talk about ideas or directions that you would take uh, so you can include in that it can be you know it can be very much like oh i want to do a mural that includes these 10 things and this is why it can also be you know, this is the type of work that I do. This is where, this is the direction that I'm headed, but I don't know exactly where I'm going to go. That's okay too, but it is a narrative. You don't have to have any sketches or any uh, formulated, fully formulated ideas that you have to present uh, beyond just a narrative where you talk about the theme and how you might connect that in the work specifically. And that's, and that's a good point too, for clarification. If anything isn't clear or doesn't seem clear, we definitely want to clarify that for you. And if you realize later as you're working on this, you want to submit and you read through it and something doesn't make sense, you can reach out to us and we will definitely answer any questions that we can. Uh, just make sure, you know, if you do it on the day of the deadline, it's a Sunday, we're probably not going to get that email. But if you reach out to us before then, you should definitely have time to hear back from us. We want you to be successful. We want you to have everything that you need to be able to submit to this. So if there's anything that comes up, you can always reach out, reach out to us. Uh, and then uh, the last question, I think we might have touched on this earlier, but uh, the last question that was submitted, are there recommendations, likely preferred scenarios to not waste food? And this one, for example, sharing meals with people in need, food banks, just buying and using less, meal prepping weekly so that food is clean and cut and ready to eat, et cetera. Um, I think y'all touched on this earlier, but I just, want, since it was in the chat as well, I wanted to bring it back up. Yeah, again, um, not, not that that would be prioritized or privileged, but I do think that it's an interesting concept to be thinking about how do you bring in food and the community? So, because those really are the big touches that we want to make sure that we're capturing with the art. Um, so the interpretation, again, is think of it as this particular place just happens to be this nexus of a lot of people and how those groups, be it agriculture, be it commercial, be it just your average everyday Joe in North Nashville, how are they coming together and making community and food work together. So I think that's probably, if that helps with the direction, um, not necessarily a specific practice, although if that's what you choose to show as your vision of community, I, I could understand that as well. But yes, the not to privilege it, but again, I just, as I am not an artist myself, but I would never want to imposition or influence um, your creativity or your interpretation of that. And I'm very excited to see what that means to you. All right, well, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for your interest in this request for qualifications. We are excited at the Arts and Business Council to be partnering with Urban Green Lab and the Turnip Truck uh, to be able to offer this uh, opportunity to local artists. And we are really appreciative of all of you being on the call today. Uh, if you have questions that come up, definitely reach out. But otherwise, have a great rest of your evening and have a great weekend ahead. And we look forward to receiving your portfolios.